I am joined by Michael Smith from San Jose, California, a computer program manager who has uh, devoted so many hours to unraveling the codes that got him inside of the data set of which the U.S. government uses to tell us that this month or this year has been the warmest ever. How long did you really spend at this project, Michael? Oh, I've been working on this for oh, uh, over a year now. Uh, I'd guess somewhere over a thousand hours total. Was it a difficult task or was it just uh, clicking on a, on a program and opening it up? Uh, it was difficult. <laughs> the, you can download the software and that's a click on a, a link and it downloads. Uh, then you get this large basket of very old software that's been changed over the years. So there are, there, there's a whole collection of programs that have to fit together and it's fairly tricky to get them to all run on a different platform than they were originally designed for. Now why did you do this? <laughs> well I'd spent close to six months on an internet site complaining that this needed to be looked at, somebody should do it, somebody should do it and one day I realized well I am somebody I had the necessary skill and the necessary attitude I should do it well I have been a meteorologist for 55 years and watching temperatures all over the world every day and I have known for some time that these claims about this month or this year being the warmest ever the fifth warmest ever or something had to be totally an error but how did you come to believe that well, I had thought there was something wrong with the, the program. I was looking at NASA's program called GISTEMP, and I thought the errors were going to be in it. And I figured as a computer programmer guy, I could look in that and figure it out. But when I started to test it and benchmark it, I ran into something else. And at about that time, NASA announced the 115-year record heat in California. At that time, I had tomatoes in my backyard that were not setting fruit. They only set fruit when it's hot. It was not hot. And that's what started me looking at why. And at that point, I found the problem was there were no thermometers left in California that weren't on the beach. There was one in San Francisco and three on the beach in Southern California. Other than that, no thermometers in California. What do you mean? I mean, there are thermometers all over California. There are thousands of temperature points in California but none of them make it into the Global Historic Climate Network, which is what is used for producing those record heat maps. And when so you, you looked have, at that network, what did you find? When I looked into the, the Global Historic Climate Network data set, that's the data set that comes from NCDC, uh, the National Climate Data Center, I found massive deletions of thermometers. About 1989 to 1990, there were around 6,000 total thermometer records. In 2009, that dropped to around 1,500, and then by the time the GISTEMP program is done with it, there's under 1,000 that are used to produce, or about 1,000, used to produce that anomaly map that's advertised as the record heat. Well, I mean, the people didn't stop taking the temperature. Why did they drop them out of the, out of the data set? That is something to ask NCDC. I can see no good reason for doing it. Did you find any pattern to that dropout? Yes. I started looking at it initially just to see where were these thermometers. If you have the globe, where on the globe were they? And I found they marched steadily southward until you hit Australia where they marched north. Then I realized, wait a minute, they're marching towards the tropical latitudes. And each month I'd look at another piece and I found they were marching from the mountains to the sea, from the cold altitude to the lower altitude, from the cold inland areas toward the water if the water was warmer. So now we have uh, data sets in the 1990s based on, let's say, 1,500 temperatures and previous years on 6,000. And were they comparing one to the other? Yes. The, the baseline... Well, those can't, that's apples and oranges, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I think it's worse than apples and oranges, but that's the metaphor. Uh, they were comparing a period from 1950 to 1980 where they had thermometers in cold places with a current set of temperatures where they had deleted the thermometers from the cold places. Now wait a minute, not only did they delete, but they deleted in a pattern? Yes. So for example, in California, in the GHCN data set, there are four surviving thermometers. One at San Francisco airport and three down near LA. How do you measure the snowy Sierra Nevadas when your thermometer is on the beach in San Diego? Or the temperature in Fresno, Bakersfield, or Death Valley? Or any of them. Yeah.
They simply do not exist in the data set. And is this they true all around the, the world? They exist in the baseline, but they don't exist in the current temperatures. And yes, it's true around the world. One of the more startling ones I ran into is Bolivia. There's a wonderful baseline for Bolivia, a very high mountainous country, right up until 1990 when the data ends. And if you look on the November 2009 anomaly map, you'll see a very red, rosy, hot Bolivia. How do you get a hot Bolivia when you haven't measured the temperature for 20 years? Well, how do you? They take the temperature from places up to 1,200 kilometers away and copy it in. They fill in with what they've got. And what they've got is the beach in Peru and the Amazon jungle. Now, you're telling me that they've cut off temperatures. Let's say the Northwest Territory, northern Canada. Have those yeah. dropped out of the data set? There is no longer any surviving thermometer in the Northwest Territories or Yukon. Those are filled in from somewhere else, which, because there's none in the Arctic either, has to be somewhere more southerly or closer to the ocean where it's warmer. Uh, none of the Arctic? You mean we don't have a North Pole temperature as part of this? There's plant? one thermometer surviving in the Canadian Arctic. That's in Eureka, Canada. And that place is described as the garden spot of the Arctic because it has an unusual collection of plants and animals that can live there due to its abnormal warmth.